Hey guys, and welcome to my review of Mother Russia Bleeds, developed by Le Cartel and published by Devolver Digital. The game was released worldwide on all platforms on the 5th of September 2016. I just want to preface this review by saying this is one of the most violent beat em up games that I know of, and I've played quite a few, so if you're triggered by violence or adult themes, I suggest skipping this one. Mother Russia Bleeds is an old fashioned side scrolling beat em up, which is a love letter to games like Streets of Rage and Double Dragon. Despite being fairly similar to some of the best classic beat em ups, Mother Russia has its own unique style filled with pixelated gory goodness that sets it apart from the rest. The game starts you off on your own or with three other players or bots in an alternate 1980s Soviet Union ruled by the Russian Mafia. The four playable characters, Sergei, Natasha, Ivan and Boris, work for a man named Mikhail and make money by street fighting in the slums. One day, government forces raid the operation and kidnap the four characters. The party wakes up a month later in an underground laboratory built under a government prison where they've been made guinea pigs for the concoction of an addictive drug called Necro. They break out of their cell and escape the laboratory, killing all scientists and security in their way, while suffering increasingly intense hallucinations due to the Necro. This drug plays a big role in the game and is a double-edged sword in the sense that it gives the characters awesome strength, but makes them frequently ill and hinders them mentally. While playing this game, I couldn't help but think of Jason Statham running around in the film Crank, jacked out of his mind on some Chinese synthetic chemical that was meant to kill him but it just ends up making him invincibly violent. After escaping the laboratory, the game takes you to a variety of locales that each have a unique atmosphere, which include different enemy types, music, weapons, game mechanics and of course, difficulty. The game has a fairly involved story, and your aim is to bash your way through eight levels to ultimately overthrow the government. The story is definitely worth listening to, and there's a few twists, but you can pretty much skip the dialogue and have just as much fun. The story in this game is pretty good for the genre, but as you'd expect, the combat is where it really shines. There are four characters to pick from, each with different aptitudes in speed and power. I personally like to play as Boris, as he's fairly balanced and good for survivability. He uses flying knees, which is amazing for crowd control, and isn't hindered by being slow. If you choose to play as Ivan, you'll be doing huge amounts of damage at the expense of speed. The choice is yours. Each character has different grabs, kicks, punches, and fatalities when injecting Necro. When you inject yourself with this shit, there's a range of effects that can happen depending on the one you choose. The main cocktail, the Kremlin Colonel, speeds up time and allows you to perform fatalities on enemies, which is extremely violent and satisfying. When you're not one-shotting people with it, the Necro can also be used to heal yourself when things are getting rough. Your syringe is filled up again by sucking the juice out of people seizing on the ground. Not every enemy you kill will have a seizure before death, but you might even find yourself trying to induce one by not doing too much damage to them. It's a pretty dark concept trying to bash someone into the brink of a seizure so you can suck the necroy goodness from within. But I must admit, it does end up becoming quite theatrical and hilarious. Funnily enough, the strains of Necro all derive their names from vodka cocktails. New cocktails are unlocked by finishing arena variations of the campaign missions. These involve fighting off waves of drug addicts and gangsters. If you make it to the final wave, you unlock a new syringe to use in all future runs. These arenas are pretty difficult, and thus I've only unlocked one alternate syringe out of the 11 unlockable ones. Their effects range from blowing characters up, to making you teleport to enemies, to letting you heal when attacking enemies. Some syringes only have a few charges, so it's important to be replenishing your reserves with seizing bodies as often as possible. If you're playing multiplayer and your teammate goes down, you can draw some necro from yourself and inject it into your friend to get them back up. This is an awesome way of keeping the fight going if things are getting tough and one of you gets knocked down. You can also stick your friend with your syringe to heal them if they're out of charges. On higher difficulties or hard fights, you'll find yourself using this mechanic a lot. If you can, playing with friends is the best way to go, as it adds more enemies, the potential for combos, and ultimately, more all-out chaos and fun. As the game progresses, you will encounter different kinds of melee weapons. These range from knives, baseball bats, toilets, bar stools, broken bottles, tasers, and even chainsaws. Towards the middle of the game, firearms start to pop up. These are incredibly satisfying to use and are fairly realistic in the sense that if you shoot someone, they die. No one is a damage mob, except if you yourself get shot, in which you can take a few bullets before punching your time card. 
The one downside of the guns is they blow people's heads off. This means no seizures and no potential for juicing necro. Each level has a boss fight and these are inventive and at times very difficult. One early boss has you belting a guy toward a meat grinder with a baseball bat. Another has you dropping flashbangs on a train track with perfect timing to get a special forces dude hit by a train. You even have to fight an armoured bear at one point in the arena, which is just fucking ridiculous. I feel like a lot of thought went into each of these boss fights and they feel all different and stray away from being repetitive. So what's the verdict? Ooh. Mother Russia Bleeds combines all of the things you loved about side-scrolling brawlers into one game. The violence, weapons, gore, crazy scenarios, unique boss fights, adult themes, and a seemingly unlimited amount of drug addicts and gangsters to liquidate as you go. The melee weapons, the guns, and the weightiness of the combat feeling your punches and kicks connect is so extremely satisfying. One of my only gripes with the game is that it's fairly short if you play it on normal difficulty. You can probably finish the entire thing with a friend in about two hours or so if you rush through. This is somewhat alleviated by the ability to fight in arena levels, unlocking new syringes and playing the game in a different style all the way through. Although I still wish there had been a DLC or more campaign content. Other than that, I can't recommend it enough. It currently comes in at 21 Australian dollars on the Steam store, and I promise buying it won't be regrettable. It's just too uniquely violent and intense to miss out on. As always guys, thanks for taking the time to tune into my review. Thank you to SGZ and Tayray for helping me collect game footage, and a big thanks to my patrons for your continuing support. It's much appreciated. Catch you on the next one guys.